yeah, I'd like to, to introduce um, Asia Ogiezola Otamendi, who is uh, currently completing a PhD about Basque opera and its relationship with Spanish musical nationalism between the last decades of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th. Uh, his research interests include the study of musical milieu in late 19th century Basque country, transnational cultural transfers between Basque country Spain and turn of the century Paris, the making of Basque opera, and the reception of Basque music and operas in Spain. Between May and July 2019, he carried out a research stay at the CRI MSc affiliated with Paris Sorbonne University. Um, so thank you so much, Asya. Uh, I will hand over to you now. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you, Chrissy, for your uh, introductory words. And what well, I would like to thank as well uh, the organizing committee and especially Lola for, uh, well, giving me the chance to to present, uh, to participate in this, in this Congress. And well, I think I should just uh, get started. Uh, well, in 1894, uh, the San Sebastian, San Sebastian born writer and playwright Marcelino Soroa. So maybe if I. Yeah, better, I think. Yes. Well, in 1894, the San Sebastian born writer and playwright Marcelino Soroa published an eclectic collection of brief articles called Asac Etanaste, comic and freely translated into Spanish as uh, Berzas y Versos. And uh, Cavaches and verses, uh, literally in English. All texts shared a common characteristic, thematic and linguistically evoked the old San Sebastian, surrounded by a defensive wall and located in a strategic enclave next to the Cantabrian Sea. San Sebastian, or, Don or Donostia in Basque, was a place that Sora himself had personally known before the beginning of a long process of urban transformation. The demolition of the walls in 1863, the building of the city extension or Ensanche and the arrival of tourism, thanks to the construction of the railway in the 1860s, favored the gradual establishment uh, of a series of economic, social, and uh, cultural dynamics that modified the urban landscape. Sora's literary and dramatic works can be seen as a testimony of the uh, emotional effects of the modernization of, of San Sebastian. In fact, he wrote that uh, fiction or the imaginative force could be an effective way to go back to times that unfortunately won't come back. And these words uh, can be, well, sorry, these words uh, could be related to the interesting uh, de dedication of the music theater, Iriarena, uh, custom brista work that we, that we shall analyze uh, further on, and which Sora decided to write to pay homage to the Koshkas of the Church of St. Vincent. And they quote, to you who have seen me born, who have taught me to feel, End of quote. His words open an analytical path that considers the association and interference of the production of, of, of his artistic works with a historical context characterized by changes in uh, urban environment. Well, during the second half of the 19th century, uh, the old city of San Sebastian, popularly known as Iruchulo, experienced perhaps the biggest transformation in terms of urban development and expansion. Its growing importance in, in political and economic matters pushed the local authorities and bourgeoisie, which were both intimately linked to each other, to adapt the city to the possibilities of a capitalist economy based on the exploitation of tourism, since, the, for example, the Spanish royal family uh, decided to spend the summer season there, as well as on land and property speculation. Some similarities concerning um, dynamics and problematics of uh, urban transformation made relevant to relate the case of San Sebastian with other modernization processes in both Europe and, and Spain. Uh, Ildefonso Cerdas uh, Barcelona, and in particular Osman Sperry's, uh, can be taken as representative or even referential models uh, for local architects Antonio Cortázar and his successor uh, Jose Goicoa, who designed the new urban plan of San Sebastian following the shape and architecture of the Parisian residential and public buildings and, and spaces. Well, this dramatic transformation triggered economic modernization and had direct effects in social relations and cultural matters. In this communication, I will try to analyze uh, the late 19th century costumbrista music theater, a uh, local subgenre we could call it, 
that started with Sordoas Iriarena. But I will also try to link the production of, of this local theatrical uh, subgenre with the shifting urban uh, environment of San Sebastian. Well, as has been noted in other, in other studies, costumbrista or popular music theater or, or operetta uh, can be considered as both a byproduct and a reflection of this of its historical context, especially during the 19th century, when deep urban transformations caused severe rifts and displacements concerning the living, uh, the thinking and producing conditions. Uh, following to Svetlana Boim, a sense of loss and displacement emerged within social groups that experienced these changes, which paved the way to uh, expressions uh, prompted by a nostalgic feeling of a bygone past. The past was thus rewritten and understood according to uh, sentimental needs and, and biases. As a matter of fact, nostalgia would operate as an ideological device that contributed to an idealization of individual and collective memories. The changing urban landscape uh, inspired some of, the, some of those works, for example. The city could be seen uh, not only as a dynamic entity that uh, intervened actively in aesthetic creation, but also as a palimpsest of new and old human geographies where physical and intellectual symbolic relations were born. Uh, similar to operetta, for example, Costumbrista music theater was characterized by the onstage representation of mundane or everyday life. It could be argued then that in the context of urban metamorphosis, it offers stimulating opportunities of uh, historical analysis. The city becomes an amalgam of real and imagined places. That is a multi-layered framework uh, that refers not only to a specific uh, geographical site or, or set of coordinates, but also to matters of identity, presence, and behavior. Uh, Sora both witnessed and lived in person uh, the gradual transition of his native city, and his literary and dramatic works uh, mirror the effects of a dialectic between a traditional culture linked to well-established social, uh, social customs and a new urban or even more uh, cosmopolitan uh, culture that was comparable to uh, hegemonic social habits of big European metropolis, which was very present, especially during the summer season. It is a contrast clearly visible in some of his 1890s works, uh, such as in the music theater, uh, La Concha Excursión Veraniega in Un Baño y Dos Olas, or Summer Trip in One Bath and Two Waves, which is a comedy where the protagonist, a rich bourgeois gentleman, uh, tries to learn Basque with the help of his maid, who hardly speaks Spanish. So I wrote a hilarious plot full of linguistic misunderstandings uh, between two characters that uh, belonged to uh, different cultural communities. To a certain extent, it was a good example of a social, social cultural radiography that was becoming more evident in late 19th century Basque country. And likewise, the dialectic of, of contrasts can be detected too in the aforementioned book, Asaketanaste. In spite of the messy and comic tone uh, of most articles or poems, uh, Sora didn't hide the emotional effects of caused by the urban modernization of the city, particular when he, particularly when he wrote about uh, koshkerias, based on the Basque term koshka, which can be translated uh, as corner, ledge, or step. It exemplifies a pattern of his literature, uh, that is the common use of a localized terminology, which frequently encapsulated meanings that not only refer to objects, uh, social attitudes, and city spaces, uh, but to the subjectivities linked to them. So I use the term to mention some places, uh, such as the defensive wall or uh, the church of St. Vincent, for example. However, he used it as well as an identity marker. He also included other words in the same, uh, with, in the same manner and with similar intentions. Terms like, for example, uh, Kulumendi, uh, Ricocheme, or Jose Maritarra connected his literature to a shared uh, imaginary of the old city. And so Rex expressed his sadness for the gradual modernization of San Sebastian and the subsequent loss of or disappearance of a series of spaces and, and, and especially customs. In an article, for example, uh, published in Azaketanaste, he described the feelings provoked 
by the demolition of the walls in 1863. It highlighted the emotional side of the event, emphasizing the depth of the forthcoming transformation concerning identity issues. Following his uh, description, new and unknown horizons appeared uh, when the walls disappeared so that our love for the poor Koshkas vanished. He also stated that the intimate and the familiar life of city dwellers disappeared gradually. By 1894, he recognized neither the city nor himself within, within the context of the modern city. Everything was splendorous and glimmering, but the city had changed. So Sebastian was no longer uh, Iruchula. These impressions were shared by other local artists, as some contemporary articles and illustrations show, for example, in the local newspaper, uh, La Galerna Seminaria Koshkero or Koshkero Week, uh, Weekly. The old city was recreated and evoked in its pages, but uh, some urban decisions and social practices were also denounced, such as the uh, renewed autonym of the city and the adoption of some foreign fashions. Um, so that was not the only playwright or artist who tried to recreate the everyday life by the comic uh, staging of quotidian situations, adding popular melodies but that were not necessarily composed ad hoc. It is interesting to note that no professional artists participated in most, most music theaters. Generally, productions had an amateur nature. Actors, musicians, and singers belonged to reduced social circles, such as uh, gastronomic societies or leisure clubs. And for example, uh, the work Iliana, which I'm going to talk about later, was, uh, was a play or was a music theater, uh, which was played by Sorawa's students because Sora was a teacher in a, in a, in a, in a high school institute. Uh, most productions were made for private consumption then, although there were others which were staged in the most important theater of San Sebastian, normally when a traditional festivity was held. Uh, regarding the linguistic use, uh, sorry, the linguistic side of these works, uh, bilingual productions in Spanish and, and Basque were predominant. However, uh, the continued success of the so-called uh, Basque festivals, uh, Fiesta Seuscaras or Juegos Florales in Spanish, during the 1880s, uh, promoted, uh, by the way, by the local authorities in order to boost uh, Basque culture, uh, works written entirely in Basque gained uh, momentum. Along with Soroa, authors such as uh, Victoriano Iraola wrote several librettos for costumbrista music theaters, even though they were not very, uh, very long and didn't excel for their artistic quality. General patterns of, uh, of late 19th century um, local music theaters suggest that a uh, potential audience was presumably popular and not particularly to elitist, we would say, uh, concerning artistic uh, preferences. So according to the conventional radiography of most productions, it can be assumed that artist uh, priorities were addressed to, the, uh, to represent the urban environment, generally in a comic or even quirky manner. Nonetheless, the comic staging of the city could be uh, influenced by ideological uh, biases too. The premiere of Villarena in 1876 took place within the exiled community of some San Sebastian inhabitants who settled temporarily in French Basque country village of Sibur to escape from the Third Carlist War. Sora himself was there uh, since he was a sympathizer of, of, the, of the Carlist cause in opposition to the uh, governing elite of San Sebastian, which was predominantly liberal. In this sense, the recreation of typical scenes of the old urban life in, in, in the arena could be seen as an evocation triggered by an ideological glance. It is not worthy to recall, so does the dedicacy to the Koshkas of St. Vincent. Irayana's Libret specified that the dramatic action took place uh, during the carnival uh, festivities. However, the uh, alleged realism appears often confused with a series of bizarre um, situations. Uh, for, uh, the protagonists are some young travelers who at 5.30 in the morning are still wandering in the streets trying to escape from the night watchman. The city itself was a sort of character in the play. Uh, libretto annotations described acutely the dramatic space, but even local festivities were staged. For instance, the carnival, but especially the so-called uh, soca modurna or tired bullfight. In fact, the young pub crawlers uh, were waiting for the beginning of this event. 
before carnival troops uh, took the stage while playing a musical repertoire uh, consisting of popular songs, sorticos, marches, and habaneras. The final scene of the play was a recreation of the of the bull, uh, sorry, the tight bullfight, with the young revelers now trying now to escape uh, from the heifer or the bull. Uh, Iriyarena inaugurated a sort of uh, musical comedy tradition strictly addressed to, to the representation of local life, particularly after its popular uh, success in its premieres in 1876 and in 1878, now in the main theater of San Sebastian, as well as in later revivals. General characteristics of Iriyarena that comprehended linguistic uses and recreation of local customs would be reproduced in future works either by Soroa or some other artists. In all these works, uh, the staging of the old city of San Sebastian responded both to uh, a making of a geographical framework and to the recreation of a series of customs and characters considered to be traditional. For instance, uh, in, in, in Iriarena, mentions to the city are quite constant in libretto notations, for example, and normally in a laudatory way, emphasizing a proud sense of belonging to the old city. Moreover, cultural tradition are taken as identity markers, as it happens, for example, uh, in the case of the Sokamutura or Thai bullfight, uh, allegedly a collective practice that could identify or characterize typical Donostiera behaviors. And the music of, of, of Iriyarena, traditionally played during the, the bullfighting festivities, was described as a sort of emotional therapy against daily problems. Well, this paper is just a sketch or outline of, of a series of music theaters that needs, of course, needs further uh, research and, and discussion. And in particular to highlight not only uh, the symbolic metaphors in costumbrista plays, but also uh, to note some, some issues that, well, due to the limitation of, of this paper, uh, I couldn't I couldn't include. Uh, I'm talking about issues ranging from uh, the implication of public sponsorship in the promotion of works uh, that responded, for example, to identity identity needs, either regionalist or nationalist, as well as some paradoxes regarding the case of several individuals who were located in you could say the opposite sides of modernization. Uh, that is, on the one hand, investing and speculating and at the same time, uh, directing or even supporting economically uh, cultural ventures. And interestingly creating, uh, by the way, an artistic milieu uh, where Sora himself accomplished to make a name for himself. So, well, this, this brief paper uh, is an attempt to open an analytical path about a cultural phenomenon that uh, hasn't received much attention and that hasn't been related to the dynamics of urban transformation that characterized the historical context of several dramatic uh, representations of the traditional social life. Uh, Riyarena could be a part, presumably the first one, of a local subgenre that under its comic uh, and custom brista uh, surface uh, hides different kinds of dialectics. I'm talking about dialectics related uh, to linguistic uses and cultures related to recreations of a shift in human geography, as well as to musical and social practices that uh, during the turn of the century would be at the core of political tensions and artistic debates, even concerning the design and promotion of, uh, of Basque opera. In few words, a series of topics that uh, may help to obtain a more nuanced image of, of the late 19th century artistic landscape of the, of the Basque country. And well, this is my presentation and well thank you for your attention and well if you have any office uh, comment or question just feel, please feel free to to ask thank you thank you so much Asia um that was uh incredibly detailed and um very very interesting paper there's um a lot of food for thought again um and <clears throat> I just yeah found it particularly particularly compelling your um depiction of of the Costumbrista music theater as this kind of as kind of encapsulating and sort of representing um 
the kind of material urban environment in music and sound and, and theatre as it kind of hovers on the kind of brink of, of disappearance is really powerful. Um, there's a question in the chat from John van der Vert. Um, he says, you had mentioned that these musical theatre performances were mostly put on by amateurs. Do you know if there was a stream of professional musicians within the Basque country that were proponents of traditional culture or any vein of that sort? Were the performers primarily within the tight-knit community? Well, I would say um, a more professional um, artist uh, were uh, still in, in the, uh, on the way because, for example, in the case of San Sebastian, the 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 city academy of music wasn't founded until uh, 1879 so uh i would say uh it will it will be later on when uh, a more uh, professionalized artist uh, would appear in this in this musical sphere but for example um uh, concerning uh, some basque opera composers for example they, their education was uh, was mainly european i mean they they studied in in paris and they have some basic formation, basic education, uh, thanks to uh, individual teachers and not so much uh, thanks to uh, an institutional uh, sphere. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions? Oh, yes. <laughs> One's just come in from Lola. Um, could you let us know what the legacy of this period is for Basque nationalism and how it relates to a nostalgia for Carlism? Well, that's a tricky question. Um, I would say, well, it's, in, it's, it's interesting to note uh, that Basque nationalism uh, didn't appear until, until the late 19, 1890s. And for example, in the case of San Sebastian, didn't have a uh, great success until uh, until, the, until the 20th century. I mean, uh, what happened with um, with the cultural uh, imaginary of Basque nationalism is that, in in a sense, it reappropriated and re uh, re understood uh, the the cultural legacy that was that existed or pre existed in the. During the, during the second half of the 19th century. And for example, in the case of, of Carly's nostalgia, uh, for example, um, uh, in the case of Soda, I would say uh, his political allegiance was some kind, uh, some kind uh, was, was not so much militant in a sense. I mean, his, uh, gradually he just uh, disappeared from the political arena. I mean, he didn't have any, any, any political uh, implications or, or great implications, but and his nostalgia was was uh, I would say was more rhetorical than the militant. Thank you so much. Um, another question from um, Pamela Potter. Um, she says, "I notice the use of marches." as one of the types of music associated with nostalgia, and this is not the first time we've seen this, do you have any insights into why marches evoke nostalgia in this context? Uh, actually, I, I don't have any insight in, the, in this sense. Uh, I don't know if, 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 if the, like the typology of, of a march is linked to, to nostalgia, I would say. It is not so much about uh, a march in itself, but the melody. It's not the typology, the musical typology, but the but the melody, which is linked to uh, to a nostalgia feeling. But I'm not very much. I'm not very sure about about it. Then um, another question has just come in from Jack. Um, there's a tension between realism and exoticism in late 19th century opera, Puccini, for example. To what extent did this opera perform a nostalgic, exoticized version of its subject matter? How was Basque culture exoticized in Spain more broadly at this time? Well, in this case, in, in this um, local musical subgenre, I would say um, I didn't find like, um, like exotic, exoticizing traces, but for example, if we 
if we pay attention to to how Basque uh, opera was made afterwards, and especially uh, if we would take into account the great influence of, of, of European models and especially the Parisian models, uh, for example, the the influence of of how Spain was built and how uh, Basque culture was inserted in that in that Spanish imaginary, it had a great influence actually. Yes, it had a great, great influence, and and especially during the the beginning of the 20th century, um, Basque opera composers and especially uh, those who were in, involved in the in the visual culture or in, in the imagination of that of that uh, Basqueness were uh, highly in, uh, had a direct influence of of of, of the of how especially how Parisians and how uh, French uh, artists and composers viewed uh, the Basque country. Thank you. Thanks, Asia. Um, we've got time for a few more questions, if there are any. Um, I actually had a question as well. Um, just kind of picking up on this this concept of the palimpsest that you mentioned and um, the kind of idea of, of layering and recreating and erasing and restoring. Um, well, I wondered if there were kind of different uh, or sort of multiple cities kind of jostling to emerge at this time that were also inscribed in music um, or different musical forms and were there sort of tensions between these and the Costumbrista and um, you know, were there antagonisms or forms of kind of influence? I wondered if you could tell us a bit about that wider context, wider musical context. Sorry, I, um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear you, so I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just saying, I, um, I just picking up on the idea of the palimpsest that you mentioned, the idea of the city as being layered and new cities emerging, old ones sort of being erased. And I wondered if there, if there were other, um, other sort of uh, versions of the city that were sort of being inscribed in music at this time as well, and how they related to the, the Costa Brista Music Theatre, whether there were kind of tensions between different musical forms at this time, um, whether you could speak to that at all. Well, I would I would have to make more research about that, but it's a, but it's a very interesting question because I mean uh, we are talking about the city. Well, basically a juxtaposition uh, of two cities, an old one with with its cultural uh, milieu, and another one which was uh, mainly touristic, very similar to, to for example uh, the case of Biarritz in France, mm -hmm. in, a, in inserted in a in a, in, a, in, a, in several cultural dynamics which were very like mm, cosmopolitan, very uh, international. And for example, um, it, is, it, is, it is interesting to see how, uh, for example, this uh, custom theater, theater, music theater was, mu musically speaking, was, was, made up, was, it was made up by, uh, by international musical typologists really, except, except for example, the, the Sortico, which is, well, that's kind of, um, uh, problematical uh, genre, mm. but for example, we're talking about Habaneras, which is, I think, a very international, a very 19th century uh, musical typology and marches as well. So, I think musically speaking, is a very I, I, I talk about a traditional music, but actually, it's uh, popular music, light music. Yeah. So, so it's it's kind of um, contradictory in in a sense, but uh, I think. Um, Locals in, in 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 that time considered that type of music as theirs. So mm -hmm. it is, yeah. but I think it's it's interesting. It's an interesting question, and I will have to make more more research about yeah. it. But because okay. it's a fascinating fascinating topic, really. Yeah, thank you. That's really interesting. Um, I think time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, oh, there is a question here from John uh, Van der Vert. Uh, he says. Um, how did the younger generation tend to connect to Basque nationalism in the 1890s? Was it mostly for the older population? Uh, I would say, uh, for example, if we are talking about uh, the case of San Sebastian, I think there was a generational gap between, uh, uh, I mean, the way how uh, younger generations that were attracted by 
uh, Basque nationalism, but I think that's something more from the 20th century, not so much about the late 19th century, because I mean, we, we cannot confuse, for example, in this sense, a Basque regionalist sentiment with a Basque nationalist sentiment, with I think uh, they shared a lot of cultural uh, icons, cultural uh, content. But um, in, in speaking about identity issues and how they related to the Spanish nation, they were completely the opposite. So um, I think in the case of San Sebastian, for example, uh, and of course, uh, a modernization and industrialization had, had a great deal uh, to do with it because that's why, for example, uh, Basque nationalism appeared and, and gained momentum in a city like Bilbao, which was heavily industrialized. And for example, in San Sebastian was not so much successful until the, uh, until the 20th century because, well, the expansion to, to other provinces were uh, somehow more problematical because they didn't, um, they didn't share the same problematics, especially talking about social issues and economic economic ones too. Thank you, Asya. I think we are now out of time actually, but thank you so much. No, for thank you all. Yeah, that thank you. And